Hi, I'd like to give a brief introduction to my article. Um, recently, I've been um, working on trying to develop a psychological scientific theory that's also emancipatory um, that will contribute to um, uh, understanding and solving the massive um, global crises which are um, uh, threatening our civilization at this point. And it seems to me that um, psychologists um, in their personal lives um, are interested in uh, broad social questions, but uh, within the field of their psychological work, um, I think a lot remains um, remains um, un, undiscussed. And um, I mean, the whole point of the uh, critical psychology is that, psycholo that psychology, mainstream psychology, um, you really doesn't have the tools or the interests um, or the politics to um, understand and solve broader social questions. <clears throat> so um, my ambitious project is to try to extend and expand the field of psychology so that it does have the tools and the concepts and the politics for <clears throat> um, for uh, contributing to solving these um, enormous and awful problems that are confronting us. <clears throat> so I'm trying to develop a psychological science that's also emancipatory. And uh, my general political model um, is the work of Marx, because as everybody knows, um, <clears throat> Marx devoted his scientific understanding of the capitalist political economy in order to understand its problems and contradictions and also its um, potential conditions for um, preparing the way for a negation of capitalism. <clears throat> so his work was definitely um, emancipatory and scientific, and each one of those um, contributed to the other. And so I'm trying to do, uh, develop psychology in this same broad, um, multifaceted um, approach. And I've, um, uh, uh, I've been uh, using the work of Vygotsky as a model for this. And um, most uh, interpreters of Vygotsky don't seem to pick up on the fact that his work was very much like Marx's um, in being politically emancipatory and also scientific. And so um, in my uh, article and in my recent work, I've been trying to um, explain this. Um, I've been trying to explain that Vygotsky did have a political purpose and a political motive um, for his scientific research, and that actually the, the political purpose and, um, and um, objectives contributed a lot to his scientific work. <clears throat> and so that's really what, <clears throat> what um, my article is about. It's um, trying to show that Marx's political orientation um, uh, actually contributed and formed his uh, psychological orientation towards viewing psychology <clears throat> as a cultural phenomenon. <clears throat> and what I explain is that um, Vygotsky made very clear and extensive comments about uh, the fact that psychological processes um, are formed within the framework of Marx's historical materialist principles and, uh, and laws, actually. And Vygotsky says this very, very clearly in many, many places, which have not been um, picked up on, but he does, uh, he does make this point. <clears throat> and what he means is that um, psychology is cultural in the sense, not of a vague and general culture, but in the sense of a Marxist historical materialist culture. And that's really what he means by culture. And again, he says this over and over and over again, and Luria reinforces this many times. And so my article um, uh, identifies some of these statements and explains them. And uh, the point of Vygotsky's 
historical materialist approach towards psychological science um, is that the science will then contribute to the historical materialist transformation of society, which of course is what Marx was talking about. And so I use the uh, Marxist concept of historical materialism to explain Vygotsky's politics and also his science, and especially his notion of culture and cultural historical psychology. And so this is a very novel interpretation of Vygotsky, um, because as I said, um, it's extremely rare to see anybody even talking about the political orientation that Vygotsky had for um, the social transformation of capitalism and the development of socialism. <clears throat> and so that's the basic um, point that I tried to make, that, that Vygotsky's cultural, historical, scientific concepts about human psychology um, are grounded in the Marxist view of historical materialist culture and historical materialist cultural transformation, which is the radical revolutionary transformation of society. And um, then I go back and I uh, explain more about Vygotsky's psychological science. <clears throat> and his point is to show how human psychology is connected to historical materialist culture. Um, and I argue that uh, you can actually see this orientation throughout Vygotsky's work. He doesn't say it all the time, but he says it often enough and periodically to um, prove that that's really what he's talking about. Because if he can ground psychology and culture, then culture is historical materialist, so that makes psychology part of the historical materialist process, um, including its formation and its transformation. And I give, uh, and so um, one important concept of Vygotsky that I, um, that I explain is his concept of psychological tools. And psychological tools, in his words, are macro-cultural factors which actually form and inform uh, human psychology. And he gives many examples of this, and I give um, uh, additional examples of this. And psychological tools is really his link uh, of psychology to culture. Because what he's saying is that these cultural factors are the uh, mechanisms that operate our psychology. And that's why he calls them psychological tools. And these macro psychological tools um, actually do psychological work. They're the, um, uh, they're the factors which become internalized and which structure and um, direct our psychology and our behavior. Uh, so that's basically what I tried to show. I tried to show that Vygotsky is very clear about making this connection of psychology and culture and um, social transformation. And Vygotsky is very clear that uh, he's basing his work on Marx's work. And then I um, conclude um, by explaining that this historical materialist view of psychology has um, important political implications. Um, because it says that for psychology to become emancipated and um, to become changed, um, it's necessary for the for its formative cultural factors to become emancipated. So Vygotsky is saying that psychological emancipation requires social emancipation. And um, uh, I explain his historical materialist model um, of culture, and then I show how um, this model can help us to understand contemporary societies and um, can help us to understand uh, where we need to direct our attention to uh, change these societies in order to achieve emancipation. So that's the um, overall uh, conception of my paper and of my recent books. And my recent books, which you can see on my website, um, I use this analysis to um, analyze and critique uh, contemporary social movements, 
um, such as Black Lives Matter and various populist movements. And um, uh, it's a very interesting application of Vygotsky's work to these broader social issues. So I think um, that's enough of an introduction. And you can always Google me and find my webpage. And my articles are all available there. And the introduction um, to my books is also there. So um, I hope you enjoy the article. And also, if you would like to communicate about them, feel free to email me, and I'll be glad to correspond with you. Thank you, and goodbye.